Yeah, hi YouTube friends, this is Michael. There are those of you who keep asking me about more electronic videos. And I thought, well, I let this hobby rest a little because of all the obligations I had lately where I really hadn't had the time to do a lot. But um, I'm about to change this, of course, because electronics is a nice hobby. It's way too nice to just give it up. And... <clears throat> What I wanted to talk in this video is how to make a good quality PCB positive film. And this is, for those of you who may not know, this is uh, what you use to make well f a PCBs using the photo positive method. Then you expose them and etch them. This is the photo positive method, which is, uh, by the way, also the method that is used uh, in industry. And there is a lot of, in the hobby area, there is um, a lot of other, well, a couple of other methods like toner transfer, and you probably read about all this. But if you want really good results, you need a film. Uh, there's no way around this. Um, some people claim they make really good layouts with um, the transfer method, but it's just not, it's, it's not the quality, it is just not reproducible. It's, it's always a piece of luck. And if you want to do this, I mean, the, the, the right way, in a serious way, don't let this be luck. So, first thing you need is a good printer. And I realized that again because um, I bought myself a new printer, which is also something I can really recommend this printer. It was about 450 euros. And this printer makes real good films on, on foil, on transparencies. Uh, that's one thing. I mean, I, I want to talk about what, what's really important for, for a good positive film in a minute. And this is the Lexmark X544, uh, which is a small workgroup printer, printer. And it was a couple of, well, a year ago or so, it was almost a thousand bucks and it was dropped so rapidly in price. And I bought this one, not exactly knowing what to expect, but this printer is really good for making positive films. So what's important about a positive film? This is the film I made with this printer. And in, f in comparison I have um, the same film I made with my old printer. So, at first, uh, how do you make this film at all? You start with the layout. Um, say, you have Eagle, which is a, PC a, a CAD software. I use for uh, circuit board designs. You can use any other software on the market. Um, that's not so important. Important is a couple of things. The layout itself must be, I mean, suitable for for um, home production. This means that um, when I started with this hobby, I, I made one of the cl classical beginner beginner mistakes, like um, making the vias too small. The vias are through holes, and the rest string first of course the drill must be large enough and then you see those rest strings on, on a normal PCB would be way too large but if you make it themselves then you never forget this is a double sided PCB which means you have to get this in sync there's a margin of error and the smaller your wheels are the more likely it is that by, by uh, drilling through you destroy the rest string that's one of the reasons why this rest string has to be a little larger. Also, if you use a bad drill, a less uh, small, uh, low quality drill, or it's a little used up, you just you tear, tear them off the board. Which means, don't be. I mean, I have to. to you, you need to come to accept the fact that you need 12 uh, mil, at least maybe 14 mil. This depends on your uh, abilities. Uh, rest strings. That's one thing that is really important. It isn't even so so extremely important the, the clearance between the tracks. The clearance between the tracks, which is this distance here, that also depends on your personal skills. But yeah, that's not so critical. Because you, <laughs> those you don't have to drill. If they come out right, they are, will probably be okay. It's not so likely you make some shortcuts here. Of course, if you have a bad film, shortcuts between uh, the tracks. I mean, between... Uh, well, if it gets a little crowdy on your board, you can make shortcuts here as well. But usually that's, usually that's not one of the...
the most foremost problems. One of the foremost problems is just that the rest strings are too small, the drills for the rest strings, uh, for the wheels are too small. So never forget that. I mean, you have to, if you see that, then you see that this layout for this, this is my relay card version 2. Um, it's a, a pretty fine layout, although the tracks are, I guess it's 12 mil, that's, that's really gracious. But if you don't need more than that, why? That's the next thing. Don't make your tracks too small if they don't need to be. This should be a 12. Yeah, that's a 12 mil track. And that's completely sufficient, especially even for complex layouts. And using 10 or even 8 mil, that's something that is advanced. So start with 12 mils. That's good. That's not so likely. You know that a lot can, ha can happen during etching or development. Like there is a, there's here a little cut, and then when you etch it, it's just broken. Or they can grow together. Like there's a shortcut between the pads or something. If you see something, this is um, an Atmega 169 footprint, and as you can see between the pads, the clearance is a way smaller than the clearance between those two tracks. So if you can do that, you can do that. Um, that's that's just about at least twice as much space so if you can do that you can do that as well but never make your wheels too small also always consider that when you you have to populate this board don't make it too crowded or think about especially if this is a mixed layout like uh, I have some THT um, elements on this board still uh, those huge thingies I, I do this Mostly when I went, to, I went to socket the the parts. This is a transistor array. Should it really crap, like the transistor burns out or something, uh, due to overload or whatever, you can simply replace it. Replacing a SMT element like the the CPU here, that's a lot harder. And now, what's important when you print this layout? First, what I always do is um, show you what I do. Normally, there's a better way, which is you can do a, a CAM job that would create you uh, GABA data. Um, but, I mean, we don't need to be that complicated here. I mean, you can do that when you want to send your your stuff to a, a PCB layout factory. But at home, it's this CAM processor here. But it's simpler if you, do ch if you just print it. But um, in Eagle, for example, you have to do one thing first. Um, show and hide the layers you need. Say we want to make the top side. Now of course I just I always leave dimension. Dimension is something that is the borders and all. I leave that mostly. You can can replace it but I usually I'll leave it. Uh, that's what we don't need. So we just um, make those layers we don't need invisible. No, that wasn't all. Got something here, obviously. Uh, that is what is that? Um, it's probably the document layer, yes. Okay, okay, that's it. Um, now I have the drills marked and all. I mean, you can remove this layer as well, but it helps you finding the drills later on, especially if you make a good layout. It doesn't really disturb you. Um, that's what I usually leave. Um, and then there's a drill aid and all that stuff you can use. Um, and, uh, but, uh, okay, those dimension layers here. Yeah, you can leave them. They don't really hurt you. So those are drills, for example. And later, it is easier for you if you have such a large drill to find the center of the drill later. So that's why I leave it in. Uh, if this is all just blank. You drill this out anyways. So if there is a little copper here in the, in the area you drill, it doesn't really hurt you, but it finds you, uh, it makes you, makes it easier for you to find the center. So this is the top side, the top side layout. What I now do is print this by using the normal print function of the, of this tool and make a postscript file. The postscript file can then be used. Oh come on! Never mind. You have a postscript file. Don't print it and I let's show you. You say print, normal print function of the CAM processor. And then you can say how you want to place the layout on the on the side and I print it to a postscript file. 
uh, you have the possibility to print it to a PDF. PDF is it's it's easier to handle for most people, although especially on the Unix or even on the Windows, a PostScript file can be sent directly to the printer because that's the printer language, the native printer language, and this has one big advantage. Um, you don't have any borders, and sometimes it happens that when I use a PDF, the aspect ratio is not right. That is very, 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 I mean, that's not just important, that's vital. <laughs> if your, your aspect ratio isn't right, the whole layout is crap. And if you realize that after etching, and after drilling, and after hours of work, that can be quite annoying. Um, so you have the scale factor here, which I have to say is 100% one and one. Uh, that needs to be one and one. Yeah? And then use a postscript, you won't have all this trouble with um, fucked up um, aspect ratios, which can happen if you, ch if you create a PDF. So, uh, next. Then you send this to the printer. And you print it on the transparency. So, what's the next thing that is really important about um, layout. This is all two layers already. Front and bottom. Ah, by the way, these crosshairs you see are used um, for me to make it possible later when I develop a uh, double-sided PCB to actually um, yeah, center the film. I mean, you um, get the film in the right position. You need those crosshairs. I mean, um, you have to take the one thing uh, one out and the, the other in and all that. So it's it's very important that the distance from both uh, edges of the PCB to this crosshair is exactly the same for each crosshair, and that's also vital. And you need the crosshair. I mean, I do it with a crosshair. Some people make a bag or something like that using the two and then gluing those two together to make a bag to place the PCB into the inside. And if you have um, a developer that develops both sides of a PCB simultaneously, then that's very handy. Problem is, these start at just about 500 bucks, and I don't even have one of, like that myself. Maybe I get myself one, but you know, I have just a, a very simple model that's uh, that cost 300 bucks as well, but it's it's a little simpler. So, what's the next very important thing? What do I do? I print um, both layers twice. So this is a double film, I like to call it. You can clearly see that those two um, foils are glued together. Using a very regular um, glue, I use um, standard... I don't know whether you have this in America or something, and this is a standard... Um, it's glue that is usually used for regular paper. Um, ah, that's an all-round glue. Man, where do I have it? Well, there, there, there it is, you know. Ooh, that's alles Kleber, which uh, <laughs> in German that means um, that's an all-round 0815 um, standard paper glue. Uh, you don't need anything else. And I used uh, other glues like special glues or two component glues. I, don't do that. You don't need it. Um, next thing is don't use too, mu too much of the glue when you pr uh, uh, glue those two. Uh, copies of the film together because if you use too much glue due to the pressure um, the glue can run into your layout and if that happens it dissolves the toner and makes the layout crap so don't use too much glue that's the next important hook and then <clears throat> it's all up to your printer how good your layout really is I mean there's there's a couple of things that are really important one thing um, if the layout is distorted. Uh, you know, a printer uh, has a certain margin of um, accuracy. You print the same layout two times and if it is distorted you will never get it really in sync. Especially the larger the layout itself gets, the harder this is to do to get those two copies of the layout in sync. Why use two copies at all, you might ask? Well, it has a simple reason and it needs to be a good coverage. You see? I hold it against a reasonably bright light source and um, it needs to be black. Because, you know, you put this into your uh, exposure machine and the less light, ultraviolet light that is, comes through the uh, black portions of your film, the better uh, your result is. And, and it gives you the higher 
a margin for error, let's say you expose, expose it a little too long, maybe you have a PCB material that is reasonably old. You expose it too long and then a good film will do the trick for you, that it won't harm it. If you have a bad film, your margin of errors get, get a lot uh, smaller. The next thing. Um, yeah, this I did this layout already. I had a real problem here, and this was the footprint of the Admega. It was distorted. And this is something that is really the fault of the printer, clearly. And that is bullshit, because if uh, a footprint like that, that's the 64-pin footprint, if this is distorted, you can get, go to hell. It takes you hours to maybe mount it, and it looks shitty afterwards. So you need a good printer. That's the A&O. And also, you have to uh, configure your printer like this printer. Um, I can say how much the coverage should be. Use the highest level, at least. That uses the most toner, of course. But for a PCB film, that's just what you need. And then, what I do on top of that, I use a, a, a density spray, a toner densifying spray. That, um, depending on the toner and the printer, of course, that gives you more or less of an edge. But if you use it, it gets you out a little better. Because it, it um, don't touch it after spraying because it, it uh, yeah, makes the, uh, it, it dissolves to tone a little. If you go over with your finger, you can scrub it off or something. Be careful. But it changes the structure of the tone in a way that makes it a little more dense. And that's what you need. And then you hold it again to, against the light source. This is also a good way when you want to get the, the two copies of the film in sync by gluing it together. Um, just check out that everything is right. That those two copies are in best sync, you know, and that's a little tricky, but it's not so hard if you have a good film, that's not really a problem. And then you check out the footprint, for example, of the more delicate parts, um, and as you can see, there is a good uh, clearance between every of those pads. If those pads are uh, together, on, on, even on your, on your film, and it's of course very likely that later on the PCB they're uh, together as well, short-circuited, and that's something that can be a killer to the IC and scrubbing this off. This is shit. Okay, then when you have the uh, process, the both, both sides of this PCB, you can, that's just a little hard with one hand, take it and use both of them, top and bottom layer, Put them together using the crosshairs you mounted, and then you can check out whether those, the two sides are in sync. Because if they are not, if you made a mistake, you can, uh, maybe you placed the crosshairs wrong or something. That's the crosshairs. That's what you need uh, use later when you install the film in your exposing machine. So these crosshairs can be tested like that. So you have the two films together. Then you check it out. Hold it against the light source, and then you can use the vias, for example, here. And check out whether those vias on both sides, that is, are in sync. Like here. Okay, I didn't do this perfectly, but if I would be a little more precise, then I could see that on this film, both the vias are in good sync. So, <laughs> if they are not in sync on your film, how should they be in sync after on, the, on your PCB? Now you, you start drilling through. These vias, for example, here. You drill through. And now, if, say, you are a little inaccurate, like this, it's very clearly that the, a PCB like that, you can, yeah, throw in the garbage. Because if I, on the one uh, side, uh, drill through those uh, holes, it will be so displaced on the other, and, uh, it's, uh, you probably, that's not good. That's not how it should look like. And, um, yeah, you check this before, and then you can uh, take the procedure just uh, make your PCB from this, it's a double-sided PCB. Double-sided PCBs are always a little tricky because of that. You need to get them, somehow you need to get them, them in sync, both, both uh, sides of it. And you have a little a margin of um, accuracy here, of course. And that's, that's also, um, uh, you have a bad printer, that's a, that's a laser printer, and it has to transfer um, the image that you made 
onto the, the medium, in this case uh, the foil, and if it is distorted, then it doesn't really matter uh, if you print, oh, my, my battery is empty, okay, so I have to get to, to an end here. Yeah, what's also important on the yeah that's that's the most important thing. It needs to be a good coverage. It doesn't uh, it shouldn't be distorted. Um, yeah, that those are uh, the, and the videos and uh, what I explained to you. That those are the most important things about making a good photo positive um, PCB film. And if you have a film like that, and then a good resolution for say 1200 uh, DPI's for, uh, like uh, with this printer, you can make I guess I can make six mil layouts with that. And there's always a limiting factor. I don't have if you if you want to use very 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 fine drills, then you need to uh, to have a CNC uh, controlled driller because by hand you won't have the accuracy and you need to be uh, have a good exposure machine, vacuum exposure or anything. But making six mil tracks with a good printer and a good film that's not really a problem at home. Uh, that's what I claim. But don't make the tracks smaller than they need to be. That's that's also important. Okay, that's it for for now. I hope I gave you a few good tips and um, have a lot of fun in making your own PCBs. See you soon. I hope. <laughs>